Okay, well, I'll open the uh, February 23rd, 2023 edition of the Conservation Commission. See, I don't have to uh, read the uh, mission statement, which is good because I don't have it anyways. <laughs> but um, we do have, oh, I have to let everybody know that we're video recorded. Okay, we have, uh, there's anybody who has a, or anybody that's that's watching that has a comment they want to make that's not on uh, something that's on the agenda, and now's the time to do that. And we do have minutes. Yes. And if you want to do them uh, as a batch, that's fine. You need not do them separately. Okay. <laughs> well, I've read them. I I would uh, move that we approve them. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave? Dave? Who you call? Yep. Dave, did he? Did he? Yes. Here? Okay, thank yep. you. Uh, Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Paul? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. And first item on the agenda. The only item, right? The other one's been continued. Uh, yes, that, that second hearing will need a vote to be continued once this is okay. complete. Okay, it's a uh, notice of intent for a low level outlet replacement within the existing ice pond drainage structure and related site access and slope protection work. Work proposed within bordering vegetated wetland, riverfront area, and land underwater. Um, for the city of Northampton and it's Rocky Hill Road, parcel 37119-120. And is there anyone here for that? Yes, good evening. Um, this is Adrian Dunk with GZA Joe Environmental here to represent the project. Okay, give us an overview and I'm sure you're gonna share a plan with us somewhere. Yes. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and to start off briefly, just so we're all on the same page, um, the ice pond area is right here. It says blue dot on Route 66 slash um, Rocky Hill Road. Um, it's located between the Hampshire Sheriff Office and the ice pond drive. Um, there is um, an impoundment in there. So it's, it's right in here, uh, very forested. And it was originally a natural ice pond. So, um, you know, a couple hundred years ago, a, a kind of an embankment was built. That embankment is what supports Rocky Hill Road. Um, and a low level outlet was installed to convey um, Rocky Hill Pond Brook under the embankment and a high level high flow outlet was installed um, and it impounds water um, seasonally and during high flows it kind of impounds water in this ponded area. Um, today there's no ice harvesting there um, but the outlet structures continue to impound water which can be beneficial when there's high flows um, but unfortunately the outlets the low level outlet becomes blocked and it needs really regular maintenance to keep it clear. Um, currently, this is a photo of what's currently there. So there's a 16 inch pipe in the ground and it's protected with a pretty rudimentary um, rebar grate and it collects debris and it clogs and it, it stops flows downstream. So it stops flowing downstream of the road and it impounds water in the pond. Um, and it can be really challenging and unsafe to maintain it when it's under several feet of water. Um, 
It's pretty overgrown. I certainly wouldn't want to go in there and clean off the grate uh, if I couldn't see where I was standing. Um, and then really what, what instigated this project um, is that during Hurricane Irene, this area did become impounded and it flowed over Rocky Hill Road and caused road damage. Um, so the city is pursuing this project with a FEMA hazard mitigation grant. And the intention is really to preserve and maintain the flood control that's offered in this pond area while making it safer um, for access and maintenance, um, both regular maintenance and during high flow events, um, and to create um, an area where if there were really serious high flows like a Hurricane Irene, the water could safely be conveyed to downstream um, without resulting in dangerous erosion. So I'm going to switch to the plan view um, because there, I know in the NOI, there's a lot of components and there's a lot of numbers about this and this. And, and so I just wanna walk through um, the work. This is Rocky Hill Road here on the bottom. Um, so there, we're proposing to put in um, access. This part of the access here, coming right off Rocky Hill Road, it would, it would have a gate, so it would just be really for maintenance. Um, this section would be paved, um, and that is kind of a an emergency spillway. So if the the mm -hmm. Outlets were overwhelmed, and there was a really, you know, once in a lifetime event happening. Um, overflow could come over this paved section and safely be conveyed across Rocky Hill Road without without significant damage. Um, these portions, these two little legs on the left, they're gravel, and they're access to the high the high level outlet and the proposed new low level outlet. And so those are again to increase the safety of maintenance. Um, we're proposing a new outlet structure. It's a concrete, it's a concrete box with an inclined grate. And so that'll continue to allow the low flow, but it'll stop some of the accumulation of the leaves and the debris. So there shouldn't be those blockages anymore. Um, certainly less frequently. Um, and then this lower level outlet does need, uh, the access road needs a retaining wall because it's a pretty steep berm. Um, and then there'll be stone revetment um, in the pond edge, uh, just most of it's outside of the wetland. Um, it's between the wetland edge and we're above the wetland edge in the riverfront area. Um, and then stone revetment along the access drive. Um, those areas that are gray, are um, they'll be planted. So they'll be stone with soil on it and seeding and shrubs should they choose to grow there, um, would be uh, allowed to grow uh, large trees. When they're observed, they would be cut, manually cut. Um, and then a little bit down here, right on the edge of the road, would be traditional riprap. Um, so before I go into any of the proposed mitigation, um, do you guys have <clears throat> questions on the work? Do you, do you have a plan that shows uh, contours? Yes, yep. Okay. So this plan shows the contours. Um, it is a pretty steep berm. Um, when you kind of drive along Rock, Rocky Hill Road, I'm, I'm sure you can see it. Uh, so, 220 here is kind of the peak. So this is that lower spillway I was talking about would would convey um, major storm flows um, through here. And then this is the need for the retaining wall um, because this area up at the top of the berm is 220 and the access road goes down to 211. <laughs> so that's a nine foot um, differential. I have they, a question. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. They presently two to one slopes. 
Um, there are, we're steepening the slopes somewhat in the areas that they are two to one. Um, that's largely where this riprap is going is the two to one. And then the three to one is, will be seeded and vegetated. Go ahead, whoever I stepped oh. on. Uh, I interrupted you. Uh, it's Paul. Uh, the um, area that's uh, contemplated uh, for being paved, is there an alternative to pavement that you've considered that would still be impermeable? We considered gravel um, because, right, these, these legs are, gra will, are proposed to be gravel. So we did consider that and it, um, wouldn't stand up as well. It wouldn't provide the same protection during those major storm events. Okay. That's what I assumed. Um, just a quick question. What, what size equipment do you expect to have to go down um, to perform the maintenance? For maintenance, it's generally um, like a, a truck. Okay. And did you look at things like, uh, you know, a geo cell with, with planting on top rather than gravel um, for the gravel parts of the of the access roads? Um, I'm not sure that we looked at a, a geo cell with planting. No. Thanks. Adrian, could you talk a little bit about the existing conditions of the site beyond just the, the channel and impoundment area? Sure, and yes, I have some other photos. So um, so <laughs> this is the outlet. In this photo, you can't even see it. Um, it's pretty buried. Um, this is standing in the wetland itself and kind of looking up the embankment. That's the high, the high outlet. Um, the only work that's proposed there is a new grate because there's some um, just wear and tear on the existing grate, um, but the footprint of that won't change. What, uh, no this... shopping carts? <laughs> I don't believe there are any shopping carts. <laughs> That's how you're near a well is when you find one. Right, shopping carts and tires. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is looking along the edge of the berm. So there is a wetland all, all kind of in the ponded area supports BBW. Um, this is part of the sheriff's office. Um, so it is a fairly clear demarcation of where the wetland begins. Um, and so there's the wetland and then within the BVW is the stream, which supports the um, land under water bodies and waterways and bank resource. Um, and that's what creates the, the riverfront area. Um, this is the view along the roadway. So uh, currently, you know, access is really limited. I actually had a homeowner call me and say, are you going to need to access through my backyard? Um, so I think currently different access is maybe used or maybe a little more ad hoc, but uh, this is the area where there's a, just a lot of vegetation, a lot of slips, trips and falls, danger, um, some loose material. So this would be the, the area to put in the access um, with a gate so that maintenance workers can safely pull off the road, do their work, turn around and pull back onto the road facing forward. What type of equipment are we looking at to, to do the job as far as uh, having equipment and you know proximity to the well area? Right, so it would be, um, you know, traditional um, construction equipment, you know, regular size, you know, excavators, um, that type of equipment. There's a small area um, on the plans, you know, so the erosion control would be installed and most of the work will be done from the upland side um, to keep the equipment out of the wetland. But there is one area um, here that would have uh, some water handling put in. Um, so that's really all that would go in the wetland. Um, most of the, the construction, well, all the construction access and most of the use of the equipment would be in the upland areas. And what's involved in replacing the lower structure? You're gonna take the whole thing out, uh, the grate and everything or? Right, so it's going to put in the, you know, excavate out to put in the, the new structure, which is um, 
like a 60 square foot footprint um, concrete box. So they'll put that in and then pipe that into the existing pipe and cap, <clears throat> um, cap the current opening. So pretty minor um, earthwork in terms of installing the new grate and connecting it to the existing um, piping. And there's a riser system that raises the water up so it can get into the culvert. Um, all of that is, won't be touched. We're fortunate that we don't have beavers clogging the lower level outlet. <laughs> I, yes, I would think it's a prime beaver target. Yep. They, they clear beavers dams every few years there. I've got a bunch of friends on Ice Pond. <laughs> oh. Okay. We'll have to do what they do at uh, my neighborhood and send a truck up about every week and unclog the uh, outlet structure. Um, are there any other questions on the work itself? How much well, of the uh, what? No, I'm sorry. sorry, I was wondering how much of the wetland are you disturbing? Yes, so the um, total wetland disturbance is 163 square feet. Well, um, and so part of that is this. Um, 60 square feet is that low level outlet itself, the box. Hmm. The other 103 square feet um, is this, the grading and the installation of that revetment um, for that slope protection. Um, and that would be seeded with, con with wetland seed mix. <clears throat> um, that's actually a perfect segue to go down to the restoration plan. Um, So for the wetland, to, to compensate for the wetland um, alteration, <clears throat> as part of the regrading and the installation of that revetment, an area here that's 157 square feet um, is actually going to be lowered. So it'll be lowered to the same grade as the wetland. Uh, it'll be seeded with a, with a wetland seed mix and it'll have um, three shrubs installed um, so those are our, um, the, the holly, the Ilex verticillata, winterberry holly um, will be planted in there. So that will, um, you know, roughly offset the total alteration. Additionally, as I said, any revetment that's on the slope in the wetland footprint would be seeded with wetland conservation seed mix. Um, and then in this area that's kind of teal, that's where there could be those the water handling, um, you know, a pump, stuff like that. So that would be temporary alteration, but any any alteration would be restored in kind in place. That area would be seeded, um, and we're proposing nine additional winterberry holly shrubs there. So mm -hmm. this the whole wetland area will be um, pretty well planted with seed and shrubs. Um, we're also proposing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, these areas that are, are brown, they're in the riverfront area. Um, they would be seeded with a conservation seed mix, um, but just kind of given the sight lines, they would be left to, to just support the herbaceous growth and over time, um, you know, some, some shrub establishment um, meanwhile, the purple areas, which are also riverfront area, um, they would be seeded with conservation seed mix um, and have um, upland shrubs planted, so some chokeberry, um, to restore some of the wildlife habitat values. And then that whole area and kind of all this candy cane area, um, that is all riverfront area, and it would have um, invasive species removal. And the, the footprint of the invasive species removal um, is, it, it was about a half an acre. So it was, it was about four times more than the total, the total footprint of riverfront area um, disturbance. Or twice, sorry, half acre, twice. <laughs> 
So the total riverfront area um, alteration is, is 10,000, about 10,000 square feet. And I mean, that includes like grading that will be seeded. That's, that's all in, so it's about 10,000 square feet of riverfront area. How long do you think the project will take? Um, I think the project, um, I actually don't have a construction duration um, number, but seems like it would take, you know, sev several weeks to a couple months, but less than a season. And what type of erosion control are you going to put in? I just want to make sure I don't, I don't come, I want to tell you what's specced and not um, confuse it with any other projects. Okay, so it looks like um, a sediment log is what is what is specced. So a, like a, a, a stake to log um, around the the down gradient edge, um, a twelve inch minimum. I need a little help to understand how the ice pond association is involved in maintaining the system. Absolutely. Um, the ice pond association has, they own this small square parcel. It might be easier to see on this one. So okay. the ice pond association actually owns this small square. <laughs> um, and that's that parcel 29. And the city owns the much larger parcel that yeah. contains most of the pond. And so the Ice Pond Association um, has a requirement to maintain the outlets. Um, and that is part of a stormwater management plan that they are obligated to, and that's been recorded. Um, the city has obtained an easement to their parcel um, to allow this project. Um, and as a condition of the, the grant process from FEMA, they have to have a, an easement, but that easement is not altering the maintenance agreement. Oh. So that stormwater uh, management plan that's in place will continue to govern um, the maintenance. So it's a collaboration between the city and the association to keep it functional. Yes. Cool. Okay, any other questions from commissioners? Nope. Sarah, do you have anything to add? Uh, not, not at this point. Um, I can give some additional background on the Designs with Nature project and why this one's moving forward if the commission's interested in that, but it's included in the staff report as well. Okay. Any, uh, any questions from the public, if there are any there? Hi, I'm on blind, so I didn't raise my hand, but I do have a question um, about whether some of these problems were caused by zoning changes that allowed wetlands buffer to be shrunk from 100 feet to 10 feet and why the trees are being um, cut annually. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Well, I thought the woman who was presenting would know the answers to that. Um, I can't speak to the flooding being associated with the buffer zone changes. Um, this area has historically become inundated. Um, that's, you know, that's how it was used as an ice pond. It was filled, frozen, and harvested. Um, so I can't speak to zoning changes and, and how they 
may or may not change the flooding. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the trees being cut, that would only apply to the um, establishment of trees in areas that have revetment. So um, where there's that stone protection, uh, it would be seeded, herbaceous plants would be allowed to grow, they wouldn't be disturbed. Um, you know, medium-sized shrubs would be allowed to grow, they wouldn't be disturbed. But if, say, a red maple was growing, um, at the point that it was observed, it would just be, um, you know, cut so that its root systems can't disrupt the revetment and lower the protection level. So other yeah, trees outside of the revetment areas wouldn't would not be um, maintained. They would be allowed to to grow and establish. Yeah, no, I I, I guess I get that the alterations uh, have rendered the trees root system for sucking up water uh, mute. I mean, um, that's normally the job of trees, but you know, especially going closer towards the river, but. I, I can't see, so I can't see that area. I don't really know what the changes have been over the last 20 years or more. So just asking. I mean, changes within the pond area itself are, are not proposed. This is only uh, to ad address the, the flooding situation, basically to make it hold more water and in the long run, have it be a more substantial wetland area. Good, great. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Not hearing any more. I would entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. It's been right. moved and seconded. Sarah? All right, roll call. Uh, Dave? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Paul? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, we need a uh, order of condition. Would like Sorry, to... while I mute myself. <laughs> Um, ah. would say the standard plus um, any that you guys can think of if you think you have any more besides the standard order condition. I, yeah, I took a look at through the application pretty detailed. I'm, I'm comfortable with what they're doing. So if everybody's okay with it. I'll move uh, that we approve with the standard order of conditions. Your second? Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, Sarah? Roll call. All right, so if there's no further discussion, Dave? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Paul? Yes. Great, unanimous. All right, thank you all for your time and consideration. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. <clears throat>
Sure, I'll move it. I'll second it. And moved and seconded. All in favor? Roll call. Dave? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Paul? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. Is there anything else that uh, we have to be worried about, um, Sarah? Uh, just a quick acquisition update. Um, some of you may remember the, the lengthy permitting discussions about the Camposio driveway, most recently through the um, amended order of conditions that shifted the location from slightly and allowed it to be a um, an earthen burn rather than the initial stone um, wall that was proposed. And as part of the settlement agreement, the Camposios were going to donate a nine foot wide section to the city. So that that's been completed and is our newest land acquisition. So the uh, Kaboziak parcel to the east is now officially part of the Beaverbrook Broad Road Greenway, which is exciting. Before there was a little bit of a gap oh. where it wasn't connected. So we'll be uh, pursuing a, a walking path. Nice. Great. great. That is great. Small acquisition, but it's nice Very to have small. those two parcels long, long come time together. For I mean, not many nine feet time. wide. <laughs> <laughs> And we're hoping to close last week of March on the 229 acre Pomeroy acquisition to the Sawmill Hills. Ah, that's great. Good. Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. Those are big gap. Great. Is there anything else? That's it for me. Everybody get the pictures of, um, I couldn't understand what one of the pictures was like just a bottom of a lake or something from uh, our uh, far-flung uh, chair person. Oh, was he snorkeling? I don't, I, I don't know what it was. It uh, looked like a, up near the shore or something, and then there was a picture of a lake or something. Oh, flooding. Huh. That was about it. Sure looks like a beach, too. <laughs> Is there anything else before the commission? I see another name, so I'm not sure if there's, there's a question or not. Nope. Nope, uh, nothing for me. I see. Nothing, nothing for me. OK. OK, then um, in the motion to adjourn. Sure, so moved. Second. Okay. okay. Thank you all. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Thanks, all.